Welcome back to Room 101 from Home Boys, and it's the third of the week, and it's another look at Firebird. This time, I am delighted to welcome back to the show the host of the Football Orange YouTube site and content contributor to the Football Orange website, Michael Statham. Michael, well, how do I find you, pal? Really good, thanks. It's been a while since the last time, but it's about time we had another Dutch meeting with Celtic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we came through the last one, so here's... Touch wood, mate. Touch wood. <laughs> um, well, by the way, just, uh, before we crack on, I meant to say, since I've last spoke to you, you're famous now. Every time I turn on the telly, there you are. You're on Sky, you're on BBC. I mean, you're not charging me for this, are you? <laughs> I know what you're like. You, 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 you've been too kind. No, it's been good. It's been good. I, I do enjoy to watch Dutch football. I think the Oda Busy is growing a bit as well. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, good. That's good. good. I'd like. I'd like to touch on that as well a wee bit. Right, so like we spoke with Mike, I'm just going to put a wee bit of meat in the bone and I'm kind of just going to take us up to when Arnie Slot took over and I'm kind of, I'm yeah. going to rattle through just where Fire Nerd does. So, so bear, please bear with me until we get this. So, like I said, yesterday I spoke to the ever entertaining Fire Nerd fan, Ken Durot, about Fire, Fire Nerd from a fan view and we had a look at last season but now we're coming at you and we're kind of, we've got this cold, calculated view of the league expert, Michael. I want to kind of set the scene, like I say. So, so Feyenoord are one of the biggest clubs in the Netherlands. Yeah. But in terms of winning in the relative past, probably the weakest of the big three. I'd be right in saying that, eh? So, yeah. like, behind the Ajax and PSV, obviously. So, we touched on it briefly last night, but back in 2010... Feyenoord were almost gone, such was the financial state of the club in such a disarray. Since then, they've kind of had a total reforming attitude and the club has been, I don't know, it's mad to say it because they're basically just following Ajax's lead and but it's very much a Dutch thing in terms of bringing through the youth talent, selling on a high prior. I'd be right in saying that, eh? Yeah, um, Giovanni Van Broadcourse, I know, Scottish football fans will be aware of. Um, he he start, started it all off, won a couple of Dutch Cups with final, won the league as well. And then mm-hmm. it kind of fell off the rails when there was a bit of um, tumultuous times of managers. It went a bit stale. The playing squad went stale. And they ended up having to refresh the playing squad. And Arne Slot came in. Bit of a story with him coming in because he left RZ talking to the final board. And RZ were happy that he talked to Feyenoord behind their backs and they ended up sacking him halfway mm-hmm. through a season. But Arnest Slot waited and he waited like six or so months. He took over the season after and, and he's been going from strength to strength since then. You can see that he was putting his career first. He didn't mm-hmm. want to see out a season with RZ, that kind of thing. And he is going to go on and be one of those top coaches, I think, in, in Europe. Right. Uh, right. I, I, think, I think he's that good. Last season was brilliant, and he's got a couple of challenges this season, which I'm sure we'll kind of get into with how good final are. But last season, I thought they were very, very good, and I just, I'm just interested to see what Slot does now to make final the best team in the Netherlands again, because there's a bit of doubt that it could now be PSV with mm-hmm. the transfers they've made this summer. I don't think final have strengthened as well as PSV, and that makes me think they're both in the Champions League. But in terms of the league, balancing that with Europe, will it will it be final? Will it be PSV? Are final the strongest Dutch team now? I think if Slot gets them as well coached as he did last season, it doesn't matter if they've got the best on paper because I think he makes that different right. Slot. Right. He's that's, that good. That's that's mega interesting. That's mega interesting. Now, that's a good, good wee summary of ultimately what we're going to be talking about here. I'm going to take it back just a wee step. Um, I thought it was interesting that Arnold Slot actually took over for Dick Advocat, another former yeah. Rangers, the, the, the Dutch legend and stuff like that. But he was very much, when he went into fire, he basically came in as a firefighter. Yeah. That's right, didn't he? And then it kind of yeah. just... But as you said, so so since, uh, if I'm reading it right, since 1999, fire, one of the big three, have only won two leagues. And there's that Van Bronckhorst one you're talking about and the 99 itself. So, so no much going on. Right, so... Before we kind of dive right deep into um, Fire Nerd itself and Arnie Slot, because Arnie Slot is 
predominantly the big talking point I, I think of Firenood right now. I mean, they've got these these good players, but I think he, especially with, with him turning down Tottenham. But, but see Dutch football in, in general, say in the last five years, where do you think it's standing is in terms of European football? I like this question a lot because I keep banging the drum of the Eredivisie. Mm -hmm. So I think five, ten years ago, they dropped down to the coefficient ranking. Scottish football fans love the coefficient now. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> Good to keep an eye on it. We're good to keep yeah, an eye on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they dropped like out of the top ten. It was like 15th or something. Really quite poor for the Netherlands. And then things started to change with with small, small, small changes, like beginning to ban AstroTurf pitches, Mm -hmm. Ajax's rise in the Europa and Champions League and um, the came to be given the Dutch teams that game off at the weekend in between first and second legs. So all these kind of things were coming together, uh, introducing a second relegation place in the league. So take an automatic one, third one being a playoff. Right, right. It, it kind okay. of made people sit up and go, oh, can't rest on laurels anymore. We can't just keep buying players from the German third division or the Italian fourth division because that's what some clubs were doing in a hope to pull out the next superstar but they ended up having to play them regularly even if they were pants because there's no one to come in and replace them <laughs> and if they didn't have any like good youth players kind of just stuck with these like clog of teams that were weren't really good enough for top flight in the Netherlands but they couldn't not if it could go down in the season <laughs> so you ended up with three teams going down every season and new teams staying up Mm -hmm. Because it, it was a bit of a, of a yeah, like I say, it was, it was kind of clogging back. It, it always teams that I don't think were good enough. And there have been a that's couple a, of... That, that just may get interesting, sorry to interrupt yeah. you there. That, that, that doesn't sound dissimilar to the Scottish League in terms right. of you'll have maybe two, three teams who are kind of just floating about, just floating yeah. about, and then a team with impetus from the league below come up and end up fifth or sixth. And yeah. the, the team, as you see, they've kind of just faffed about, but that 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 playoff plays kind of that's sorry to interrupt you. I just thought that was a, a nice kind of balance. Well, yeah, no, no. it's funny because I don't I don't think it's talked about enough that what happened with that shift. But now we're talking about the Netherlands going from like fifteenth in the coefficient rankings, and now they're currently sixth, could be fifth at the end of the season mm -hmm. overtaking mm -hmm. France. Do I think on the whole the Dutch league is, is stronger than the French league? No, but I think if you put Second place in the Netherlands against second place in France. I think that the Dutch team wins. Right, it's right. Obviously, better mm -hmm. than everyone else. Of course. But I think the, the bottom of the Eredivisie maybe isn't quite as strong as the bottom of France. But there's kind of like a middling ability in France now, and I think that there are some Dutch teams that are rising up. I think Ajax will recover from the pretty terrible times they're having now that have gone backwards a bit. But PSV in final look really damn good. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you're asking. Where, what's the level of a Dutch team? What's the level of final? Slot helps a lot, but you're not talking about your typical Dutch team that's finished second or third. Um, got some good players, you know, one maybe youth product who's starting the starting the team might go for a bit of money next summer. A bit more than that. I mean, you've got PSV buying players with with decent amounts of money, and I don't know if people know what about PSG's players but they've got a bit of a luxury problem at the minute because they have um, Noah Long who was bought in the summer from Club Bruges yeah, yeah, so yeah. rather than going you think oh that's a sideways move Bruges to PSV actually no that's a step up now um, and, and they've got uh, Johan Bakayoko who's a youth product on the right side and turned down club and player offers from Brentford and Burnley so he doesn't see that as a step up either as a now step up. Which, you know? which is which again as a Scotsman is quite refreshing to hear. Yeah. I mean I mean look you see these massive teams like Ajax, like PSV, even Feyenoord, I mean losing players to Leeds United and stuff like yeah. that who are per perennial strugglers in the league at this at this point I know how big a club they are. But it's that, that's quite refreshing to hear. Yeah. And Premier League's obviously got all its money. And then you got Hervin Lozano, uh, who's come in, and he was a PSV legend, and he went for big money to Napoli. He's just mm -hmm. come back to PSV. Bakayoko hasn't gone anywhere. Noah Long's already come in. You're like, they've got three really, really good wingers that could get into any team in the other of And um, Feyenoord's have got some good competition as well. I mean, they've got two really good strikers. They've got Santiago Jimenez. He's a really good player. I like him. Mm -hmm. And he's the main striker, Mexican. And uh, they've got a backup striker now, Oweda, who's who was mm -hmm. a top goal scorer, one of the top goal scorers in Belgium last season. And he's just have to sit on the bench. 
And mm-hmm. I'm thinking well, they're two really good strikers and they should both be starting in, in a team such as finals. But that competition is, you said they were refreshing. I find that really refreshing as well. Like a competition that is in the top teams in Eredivisie now is pushing the stand up even higher. And we're not seeing these freak results of the sevens, eights, nine nils. I mean, there's a 13 nil win for Ajax a few years back, people might remember. That's mm-hmm. not happening anymore. The bottom of the Eredivisie has just got a little bit better. So you asked about how good the league is. I think it's in a really good place. I'm delighted right. to follow the league and be obsessed with it because it's gotten better. Youth players are still coming through, which is a massive draw. And we're seeing, yeah, an, a, an upgrade in the standards. And I think Feyenoord, you know, people like this compare, don't they? I think if you put them in the Premier League, I think they're in that, just underneath that top seven bracket of the European chasers, but above that kind of mid-table pack. I think they are that good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I really like them, and there's lots of players in there. I'm sure get onto. Right. Okay. So we'll, we'll go back to we'll go back to the manager now. I'll, I'll give a yeah. wee a wee bit of background. Right. So Aaron Martin Slot of Army, a 42 year old former midfielder who previously played Eredivisie football for both NEC Breda and Feyenoord neighbours Sparta Rotterdam. Um, he worked as a youth coach as well before moving to Canberra as assistant manager. He was appointed assistant at AZ before being promoted in 2019, like you said. His AZ side came second in the COVID season. And again, to reiterate what you said, he was promptly sacked from his role December 2020 after he was released. He'd agreed to take over at Firenord, and sure enough, later that month, he was announced to be replacing an advocate. Signed a two-year deal with an option. Slots Feyenoord in his first season would finish third, but an early exit in the cup would that would that shoot Kings that first season because it, it pumped out the cup and and league wide they've only gone tremendously well. Yeah. But but to back that up, the team the team's massive achievement finished third in the league and then made it to the first ever UEFA Conference Cup mm-hmm. final, defeated one 0 by Roma on the night and Jose Mourinho. But I suppose, uh, like I spoke, I spoke to Ken yesterday, I said to him, what did you think last summer then, after that season, what did you think? And he's like, I didn't see why not. I wasn't saying, yes, we're going to win. Yeah. But I was saying, well, we look all right. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what I was thinking, that Feyenoord were going to kick on. They lost a lot of players, and that's what put me off saying, final win the league, because they lost mm-hmm. half their team. They was literally half a team. And they had to bring all these new players in, but slot settled them in. They got scoring goals. They they just won matches. And they, they were attacking with much more vigour. They had the wing backs coming up. I was like, oh, it's like, like watching RZ all over again, the way he, he was getting them playing. Uh, and and that's that's when you know, I could just see just how quickly he was able to have his impact with the conference league run and then doing so well in the area of his e season after. And I was about this season where there's expectation on him. Yeah, there's expectation yeah. that he wins that league again, even though PSV look really good. There's expectation now that final finish, well, at least third in this Champions League group, but maybe even second. Mm-hmm. Um, and people were disappointed if they finish bottom of this group. They'll be disappointed if they don't win the league. But there's, yeah, a competitive league. And I think he'll get these players settled again, these new ones. He has to get the best out of the likes of Calvin Stengs. Stengs is a former Netherlands international, say former because he's not been in the team for a while. Uh, a great attacking midfielder when he's fit, but he's had injury problems. He struggled at Nice in Liga. Mm-hmm. But when he's good, he's really good. And I think if Slot can get the best out of him like he did at RZ, then final have got like another gem unearthed, you know, and Slot gets that credit again for mm-hmm. making a player really good. Because that's what he did with the Conference League when he got the best out of some good players. But since they've left, I mean, their career's been okay, but they've not mm-hmm. gone on to wow. I think Slot just gets the best out of what he's got. Right, okay. Um, so you touched on it there, that his team then went and won the championship last season. They lost only two games in the way. Uh, they made the semi-final of the Cup. They were unfortunate that game, and they were very yeah. unfortunate in the quarters in the Europa. Again, Jose Mourinho, last minute, the De- Bala goal and stuff like that. Um but you, you you said there that he had them playing last season when you watched them, he had them playing like he did his as head team. So so what is his style? I I'll, I'll be I'll be honest and say as much as I like Fano, I, I get to see them in limited times. I mean, I try and watch them in Europe if they're available and I obviously I watched the, the final and I watched that quarter final and stuff like that. And 
from what I see, it is a very, very attack-minded pressing game of football. Is is that what he's all about? I mean, like I think he's suited to Europe in terms of a counter. Would that be right? Yeah, if if you've done a really good summary there of it, the high press is what slot is is known for, and he has players that will do that system. He, he mm-hmm. likes to get those in. We've seen. I, I really don't want to refer to Rangers on a Celtic podcast, you know, but he has he has had these players before. They've gone on to Rangers because of the high press in style, Dessas and Danilo. Um, and, and that's what, that's what that's the thing. that First and foremost, the high press is what final will do. When they have the ball, they have lots on the wide play. I think that with their new signing, Ivan, I, I, I'm not sure I'd say his name yet. I've not heard a commentator say it. But Vanisech, um, he's a Croatian winger that's coming. He looks quality from the things mm-hmm. I've seen about him, heard about him. Scored score the game today, didn't he? Yeah, so he, he's, he looks like a good force out wide. And that's what Final would struggle with. It was the quality out wide. Even though they won the championship last season, they could have done with a bit more in the final third. And players like that coming in just notch it up another level uh, because that's where all their threat comes from. They get balls into the box, usually quite low crosses, and Jimenez, uh, mm-hmm, great finisher. That, yeah. yeah, so I'll say as well, it's the same, getting the full backs up high, overlapping the wingers, um, being a great threat. Uh, the 10 normally joins in as well with a striker to double up. Um, I think that he hasn't quite got some things right this season with the midfield. I still think that he's not sure his best 11 is in, in, in those positions, who starting midfielders are. Uh, and defensively, they're doing well, Feyenoord. They've got an issue with goalkeeper at the minute with Bilo sure. being out injured. But mm-hmm. Reynold Rauter isn't like a you, you crap backup goalkeeper. I actually think he's quite good. Mm-hmm. So that's not like a problem. Um, Bilo that, was just, just, that was the boy. They, they, they had him in loan last season then. They made him permanent in the summer. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a good player, um, the German goalkeeper. But but Bilo is just proving to be made out of wheat bit because he's getting right. so many injuries <laughs> in his career. Yeah, disappointing because he's also the Netherlands number one goalkeeper when he's fit. Mm. Um, but yeah, defensively the back four apart from the goalkeeper really strong. Hartman, young left back uh, on the edge of a Dutch national team. Um, right back probably be here Trout in the Champions League because of his defensive capabilities, but he sometimes plays in the middle. But right back he's great. He gets four really well. And then there's Gernot Trauner, Austrian. Um, imagine like a, a a big Austrian bold guy that heads everything. That's Trauner. Um Ken, but also Ken, pretty good with Ken, his feet, good passer. Ken was loving him last night. That was yeah. one of the balls to he says, uh, he's a, if he plays well, we play well. And I was like, hey, That's okay. it. So I hope and he doesn't play well. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, probably their best defender in a defense of but really good defenders. I mean, they probably have the best back four in the area of his E. In right. each of the back four positions. Okay, um, they're that good. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, Hansko, he's the centre back. Um, Davy Hansko, he's probably the best defender in the area of his E. And so him next to Trauner, really strong. And then having right. a defensive mind in right back here, Trauder, who's really solid. And then Hartman, who's an exciting left back now. That is a back four that I think is Champions League quality. Right, okay. Um, so it's, it's in me feel where I'm like, mm, not sure yet. Jimenez is a great striker, got some bedding in to do out wide. So that's just like a little summary, I guess, of that starting eleven um, and, and the challenges I think Celtic will face. Well, well you saw about Jimenez. I mean, I never knew a Kane as another informed me that he's suspended for the week, uh, this game. So oh, all good there. And, <laughs> um, and, uh, and I think like the, the Japanese forward the same in the summer um, is Ueda. He, that's he's, it. Uh, he picked he picked up an injury last week and in, uh, in the game against Germany as well. So it kind of it leaves us it leaves us querying if, if, if we hurt it, if we hurt it hot right at this point. Um, so the Arnie slot. Let's get back to Arnie slot for just two seconds, and I just want to touch on something you said earlier. I meant I meant to ask before we we started to get into the team and stuff like that. How highly regarded is he? in the Netherlands itself um, because he's, he was obviously he was touted for the Tottenham job and I'm, I, what I'm going to say here is kind of sacrilege but if you're get, if Tottenham are getting to the point where they're taking the Celtic manager however highly we rated them then you've kind of got to think 
their ta targets are away. So Arnie Slot famously rejected them. Would yeah. that be more to do with him seeing the project of Feyenoord looking, this is all, or him thinking, well, if I'm leaving, I'm wanting above that? In your yeah, opinion. Both. Yeah, because Feyenoord have a Champions League that didn't have that last time. Yeah, yeah, Improving yeah, yeah. yourself in the Champions League is that extra notch that could attract that team a little higher than Spurs. Spurs season, you know, Europe, there's a lot of rebuilding. And start with look to that, and I think he would have considered that as a, as, as like a... If he fails, that's his reputation damaged. Yeah, yeah. At the minute, he's really on the up. And I think he he was... He had no qualms about staying with Feyenoord because he was able to spend this summer and knowing, mm -hmm. again, the cha mm -hmm. challenge of Europe. I think that's actually what I saw over the summer was it felt like if Feyenoord had a, a, a penny to spend or a cent, euro, to spend, and they did. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they did. And because I felt like Slot was making the best team that he could make this season because I yeah. have a feeling this is his final one. And he thought, right. I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to save anything for next summer. Going for it now, making a big squad. And, and that's his approach. I think this, this season, yeah, if he does well again, he gets that move, doesn't he? But yeah, he, he made no problems about it. He's like, yeah, I'm happy to stay. I've got no problems. We've got this here, this here, this here. We've got on the work program. Project's not complete. Mm -hmm. But yes, he did turn down Spurs. It didn't seem like the right thing for him. As open as he was. I say open. When managers don't shut it down, then they're open not they, for a move. So, mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, so, so you kind of covered that player-wise. Um, I'm going to take you back to last season with the thoughts of coming to this season, right? So last season, they obviously they won the title season, but I want to kind of more look at the Europa League. Um, after finishing in the final and obviously getting beat off in Roma, Natalie won now. They were in the Europa League the next season, last season, and they were in a group, interestingly enough, with Lazio, who obviously are with is this. They were, they were also with uh, Stumgratz and Mitchell. And they all now, finished I mean, eight points, I, didn't I, they? Yeah. Huh? All finished eight points, didn't they? All finished eight. All <laughs> finished two two wins, two draws, two defeats, and they all finished it. And Feyenoord topped the group on the basis of scoring one more goal than uh, <laughs> Mitchell, and which is brilliant. But it, I, I thought it was interesting. Now I'm going. I should have really asked you this first, so I kind of played you. Do you remember the games against Lazio? Oh gosh. I'm not sure if I watched them. I remember they lost four two away to Lazio, and it kind of showed that they weren't. It felt like in that game they were level below Lazio, mm -hmm. and then later mm -hmm. in the season Lazio got knocked out against RZ over two legs in the Conference League. That's right, yeah. So it was kind of like maybe a bit Lazio be up and down, but in that away game it felt like final were level below. Maybe they weren't up to that level of a that caliber of Europa League team at home. I can't remember the result, but I have a feeling. Been one now. Yeah. One now, yeah. Oh, one and that won them, obviously, the, the, the group, amazingly enough. Um, but they then went out and battered Shakhtar 8-2. And then, yeah. like, I, I touched on it a minute ago, that game against Jose Mourinho's Roma. And they won the first leg, 1-0. And then they were 2-1 two one down to the 89th minute and they conceded a penalty and they went to extra time and ended up 4-2. So it seems to me, and, and this is just based on results rather than anything I've seen, he seems like a manager who knows how to deal with European games, which is, yeah. is quite a thing when you come out of the era of the itself. Because I would dare say in most games he would dominate a game, he'd have most possession, he'd have lots of shots. And then they come into Europe where you've kind of got to be a wee bit more patient. You've got to be a wee bit more. I just wonder, is that counter-attacking team, is that, is, is that set up for Europe? Does Europe fit his style or is it or is it just coincidence? I think so because the best results final we'll get in this group will be at home in Kalp. I know teams mm -hmm. have a home advantage. We all know about how it makes things better. Final is, is a bit of a different beast when, when they play in the Netherlands because in Kalp. The atmosphere is fantastic. Experience it myself. It's brilliant. Like I'm mm. there with the best. Yeah. So they get the team going. The the players always, because it's players that final tracked, they love the atmosphere and respond well to that. But away, I've never felt with slot 
that defensively away from home, they are a secure, they can't quite control the game. Whereas at home, they don't, they don't seem to hold the possession like last night's last, but they, they are able to throw more attacks at teams and it puts them under heavy pressure. And the atmosphere is quite daunting. But away, they don't have that. They can't mm-hmm. hold the ball quite as well. And in, in a way, they feel a bit more lightweight, but they crumble a little bit more. Because right, right, okay. if they got the results away from home in the Europa League group stage last season, then it wouldn't have been no problem to finish top easy, anyway. Easy, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we have the issue in, in with Roma. Like they played to play well that night, but then when a goal went in the extra time, it all just went went tits up. They just, it just yeah, it went a bit flat, and you're like, oh come on, because Fulham are better than this. So they, they've got the league sewn up. They can concentrate and get into the getting further in the Europa League, and it didn't work out that way. So yeah, away from home, the Champions League will be what well, vital to finish in second, because mm-hmm. um, that's probably where we're looking at. But uh, uh, at home, they'll get those results. And I think that, that they'll, they'll handle that pressure well. I think that's what they'll look forward to, getting two or three wins out of three. But away, that's... I think that's where Celtic can get finals. I, th- I think that's where we'll see that test. Has slot got, gotten to be any better? Because that's their target now, I think, is to do that, manage that, uh, rather than just relying on quality of players to nick a goal and then then rely on Trauner and Hansko to see everything out. Because no, it should be about you controlling the game, not having these situations where they're having to sit deep for long periods because it's wildly different at home. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, that counter-attacking style you're referring to is is there, yeah, but then they can't, they don't have much of the possession, I suppose, when it comes to being away. Right, okay, okay. So, uh, if we look at so far, the, the, the results so far, so they started the season with uh, a 0-0 yeah, draw, good. Um, I want uh, the, the man sent off in 26 minutes, so you kind of let them away with the 2 2 draw with Sparta. I, I think you take the point and you're happy with it, but they had so many chances to win it, and then yeah. they had so many chances to lose it. So I think they took it, and then they went away and battered Almir City, the, the, the newly promoted team, and also battered Utrecht. Wasn't it? Was it Utrecht? Yep, yeah. and Utrecht. I watched the highlights of that. The tech defence looks stinking. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but but the one that kind of catches my eye is the the, the Johan Cruyff shield. Yeah. So they lost that they lost that one nil to um, PSV. Ken had described it for me as saying that they looked pretty good in the first half, but in the second yep. half, PSV were by far the better team and probably deserved to take it on the basis of that. Um, so. I, I do wonder if you can contain them. Is it a case of, like, we've no scored yet? Uh, the frustrations come then. Do you know what I mean? I just wonder, would, would that, is that a fair assumption or is that just, is it just circumstance because we're playing a good team? Well, that Super Cup game, when PSV scored the first goal, the atmosphere changed a bit of, oh, we oh, didn't expect that. Right, right, I know we'll do that. Because, right, right. Final had actually had the better chances to begin with. Mm-hmm. Pierce three's defense is all over the place, but Pierce three have the attacking, yeah, like Pitt's Bosch in charge, and then, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Team. I believe you're the man, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you're thinking, like, final, then we'll put together, they'll be all right, they'll get, and that, they had some chances in the first half. The second half, Pierce three didn't just like sit back, they don't have that ability. They, mm-hmm. I don't think they're good enough to do that. Right. So then, final just kind of fell flat. They, they had some injuries, players weren't available. And and then it kind of, it fell flat in the second half because of fitness at the start of the season. Uh, players weren't available, so they'll bring on substitutes that weren't good, dediluting mm-hmm. the quality. That's what happened in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not saying that the final are better than PSV, I'm not, because I, I do actually slightly favour PSV at the minute to win the league. Um, though I, I think Slot ran out of magic in that game and it was a bit right, like oh okay. well, that was a surprise yeah then they had the two disappointing results in the league and i think that red card didn't help in the first game second one spart had a good first half final probably should have won the game second yeah. half so they go okay well can't keep making excuses that's three games without a win but then they did trounce two teams yeah the defending wasn't great but i think their confidence is back 
Mm-hmm. We could see that. I think we were even called that beforehand. Like, right, well, they're going to play Almir City at home. They're going to thrash him. They'll, maybe they'll be back. But then that might be a false sense of security that, you know, are they actually yeah. back? But I do. I do. I think that their players are now firing in form. Their defence is really rather good. Mm-hmm. But it's at midfield, like I said earlier. In these tighter games, is their midfield going to offer enough protection and also attacking impetus when things aren't going so well, when Jimenez isn't getting the ball? Um, a player out wide is injured or off the game. I don't know, but have they got that extra thing in midfield that's going to help? Right. Mm-hmm. Let's that's, see. That's Let's see. That's the unknown. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. Right. Well, I'm now going to ask you to talk on behalf of the Netherlands here. Um, <laughs> so the group, the group itself. Now, it's childish to say this, but you're almost talking about. A Europa League group in the Champions League, which I know is unfair to say, and I don't like saying it, but in mm. terms of what you could have got for every team in the group, I, I think every team at every point is sitting going, fucking hell, could have been a lot worse. Could have been <laughs> a lot worse. Every team in it. I mean, we are four seeds, so if we finish third, tremendous. Mm. Right? And You've got Feyenoord, you've said it already, Feyenoord, and, and Ken said it to me as well, Ken, they're mm. first seed, but they're saying, if we finish in the top two, brilliant. Yeah. And Lazio, who are the second, uh, third seed, are saying, why well, expect to win this? Do you know what I mean? And obviously, mm. they've got Madrid, they're just arrogant fucks, and they just tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, I think it's a, a mega interesting, interesting group in, yeah. in terms of dynamics. What is the thinking in the Netherlands with regards to this group? Is it something they're thinking Feyenoord should be winning? Is it something they're thinking the, the, the top seed is, is nice, but ultimately it's false, isn't it, really? I mean, mm. I, don't, I don't say that to be snide, but the Feyenoord on their top seed team, are they really? You know what I mean? So, so I mean, I, what is the thinking coming out of Feyenoord? Is it We've got nothing to lose, or is it if we don't qualify, this is a big, big disappointment? I think finishing bottom will be a nightmare. Um, right. right, okay. Finishing top would be a big surprise. Right, it's right. A big surprise. You're talking about second or third. Mm-hmm. But I think it'd be a bit disappointing finishing third at this point because of the things you just said. So, yeah, fine. it's great, great from a narrative point of view. You go, well, fine, on top of C, great. Well, that avoids some of those teams. <laughs> and then you get the, the draw that you do. Yeah, every team's happy in some way. I think final would have been happy um, to have had Celtic in some ways, but actually quite a few of the fans like, that's a tough place to go. That's a really, really tough place mm-hmm. to go. So actually, is that as good as we think? Lazio, I think final fans will look at last season as they're beating on the conference thing and, and wonder, probably can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and also having played in the Europa League, Atletico, yeah, I, I, I'll take your point. Yeah, they're not the strongest team at that pot, but yes, well, there are opportunities. But they're there. still, oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the fact is, no matter how bad it went, they're still spending a hundred million on one player. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I think they're gonna, I, I, I would plump for seconds because I think Slot will get it right, and I don't know which team will not finish second, if that makes sense. Because I don't know who could win the group, but it, it feels like any anyone could. Um yeah, I, I, I would say that final fans when that came out, they went, yep, yeah, let's give it our best shot. We're not expecting to do a certain something. But I think that they'll be disappointed now to finish third, fourth, because even though getting Europe League football after Christmas is okay. Um They've done that, and I think that now they want the yeah. taste of the Champions League, and yeah. they've missed that. Whereas Pierce in a different boat. I think if Pierce had dropped down in third place in their, their own quite favourable group, they've got a good team, but going as far in Europe League might be a nice thing for PSV, having mm-hmm. that experience of Champions League. It's funny, isn't it, that mentality it gives you, like, that range is going, oh, sorry, it's the third bloody time I mentioned them on your podcast. Well, they're, well, they're, they're, they're going. Well, I mean, it's nice because you can talk about how they're not on the same competition as yourself. <laughs> but they, they've, they've, they've wanted to be in the Europa League, which is odd. That doesn't scream 
a brilliant club, does it, at the minute? But, you, you know, why would you want that? You want to be in the Champions League, don't you? So what, why, <laughs> why not? And Celtic, for the same, they want to be in the Champions League. They don't want to be... Whilst it might be nice to win a few games in the Conference League or whatever, you want to be in the best champ, the best competition, yeah. and yeah. that's that's Def- the case. Final PSV. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I mean, ultimately, this game coming up on Tuesday is the only real Champions League game happening in this group because we are the champions and need to, aren't we? But that's that's <laughs> by, uh, <laughs> um, right. So, 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 I'll get you now. We'll, we'll talk about the game itself now, right? We're kind of on the, ho- the home stretch here. So um, we'll talk about the game. Now, y- you spoke about the goalkeeper being injured, right? And mm. I've said that Ueda's going to be missing, but he's been on the bench, he's not been. How many is missing is going to be a big blow, is that right? I mean, they're like, yeah. I mean, he scored five out of five this season. I think he scored 23 out of fucking, I think 35 games or something last season, something mental. And I watched and I've watched the highlights and, and the guy's a class act and and again total ignorance. I was like, oh, I can't see I've really heard of the guys. And I mean Mexican international forward yeah. and I was like maybe I'm slacking him all days, but um no, the guy looks the real deal. So with they two missing, what does it mean attack wise? Uh, is somebody going to come in and play that central role, or is it basically going to be they're going to come wide because um is it Pixal that Ken criticised me about three times about saying his name wrong but Pixal I think that's his name huh? Pixal Pixal jeez I got it right again <laughs> <laughs> um I mean how's he looking is he he's a big player eh yeah he's quite diminutive I think to play the striker's role but his pace yeah. might might make him that option but there are a few players that Slot could call upon. And I just can see the the winger maybe playing at top, probably not being that effective, getting substituted. Somebody else then gets to go up top. Probably how it will go. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that final will, will play badly or lose. I just think, yeah. I, I wonder who, who I will mean, play that, that role. Yeah, I mean, Jimenez being, yeah, because Jimenez is the presence mm-hmm. up top. That gives final what they do. Holds the ball up, running through on goal, uh, always knowing where to be. Uh, great when crosses come into the box. When they got Mente on loan for Newcastle, he's, yeah. he's pacey as well. Um, maybe the new signing Vanasec, I'm not sure if he can play as a striker, but there are a couple of wingers that, yes, might play that role. Go in the counter-attack, getting in behind. Um, yeah, Pace will probably be the most likely choice at this point. They've got Leo Sauer as well. He's a very own player. And he could play as a striker. Uh, but I wouldn't expect that pressure put on him in a Champions League night. Yeah, no, you, you're right. That, that could that could be the biggest loss rather than the goalkeeper. Um, mm. and, I, and like I said, this is a test of how final can be a bit more defensive, have a bit more control of the ball, um, rather than kind of what feels like quick, get the ball out, you know, there's been a bit of pressure, get knock it out, knock it out. We can defend really well rather than let's hold on to the ball, let's calm it down, let's calm this crowd down. I don't know if Final would have got the ability to do that quite as much as some other teams would that are as good as them. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Interesting. Right, okay. So, I'm going to put you in the spot then. How do you think the game's going to go? Um, yeah, I think, okay, in Decal- I it's it's a, a really safe place to Final. Like they they do really well there. They've got such a great record at, in, in, in Decal. The game that they lost at home to the test at the end of last season, final won the league by then, so mm-hmm. I don't count that defeat, so count that out of the records and what the home record is. They've been undefeated there for a long time. Um, Dutch Super Cup side, that's not like a home game because their fans are there. Um, they make quite the atmosphere. That enough gets the players going and playing at a high enough level. I think if final win that game, they win that 1-0, whatever, brilliant, and they can be delighted with it. Um they have enough players. If some, if a if a wing or a second midfielder isn't quite doing it on the night, Slot does love to change it around the 60-minute mark. He'll make a triple change. He'll bring on fresh legs. Um, and they tend to be quite efi- efficient subs because they do come up with the goods. That system's working well for him. So if it's nil-nil or final to losing, going late into the game, he has those people off the bench that will, that will make a difference. So that's how we'll see the game going. If it doesn't, if it isn't going well, I think final bring players on that make a difference and get a result. I mean, from what you've said, 
the midfield thing seems really interesting to me. It, it seems really interesting in terms of if we can try and win that midfield battle. The the problem we've got is we've got a lot of injuries now, especially in defence. So our defence is very made up just now. Do you know what I mean? We've had to bring in Nat Phillips from um, Liverpool alone. Whether he's going to start, I don't know. Liam Scales has been playing. So it's going to be really interesting, especially if they're missing their main striker. No matter what you say about guys who come in, it's still a it's still a bonus for us. It's still, I mean, there's no two ways about it. Him and not playing is a massive bonus for us. Um, but that's interesting, mate. That's really interesting. You've um, you've answered that for I've been looking for anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to let you go. I'm going to say thank you very much for taking your time and speaking to me tonight. Now, where can people find you and Football Orange on the social media and interwebs and beyond? So I'm Michael Statham, and on Twitter, I'm at Eredivisie Mike. That's the name of the league, and Mike at the end. Um, I I do loads, um, not quite as much as our main editor, but for football, Anya, and that's Dutch football in English language, spelt football, and then orange, but replace the G with a J. To make it the Dutch one. And how um, did you say it? Oranja? Oranja. 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 That's it. Um, we, we do it with a website that's always having stuff posted on every single day. We have a YouTube channel that has podcasts on about the league, about the Dutch national team, uh, and interviews of players. And um, yeah, we've got a Twitter platform at well, X, what we'll call it. Um, that's quite active and has, has a good following. So I think if you would. Yeah, want to check us out? Do that, Football Anya, and I'm, I'm at Eredivisie Mike. Absolutely, Anya, thanks Scott for having us on. Absolutely amazing. Thank you once again, mate. Um, I hope hope next time we speak is a wee bit quicker. And um, I was going to say good luck to them, but no, I hope, good luck to all the Dutch teams after next week. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, man. Good to chat.